that I would like to read this evening that uh, I, I didn't get to read on Sunday morning, and I'll try my best to read it again this coming Sunday morning. Uh, but it says, Dear Church Family, thank you for the generous gift. I have been excited to start college this year. I will let the Lord guide me through everything I do, and that is Aiden Gwaltney. And so we want to continue to remember Aiden and uh, continue to pray for him that God would just continue to lead him in the direction that he would have and would want him to go uh, through his life. Just a couple of uh, announcements there that we do want to make mention of and uh, remind everybody, and we're going to be uh, having a special time of prayer uh, here in just a little bit once we go over our prayer list. But uh, if you got one of these on Sunday and you've taken it home and you've been going through it this week and praying uh, through it, um, we, uh, we will be going over that. But we are in the week of prayer uh, for the Golden Offering, that's for Tennessee um, Tennessee Baptist Mission Board, and uh, we, we learned a little bit there on Sunday about the Tennessee Baptist Mission Board, the Golden Offering, what it goes for. Uh, Sunday, we prayed for Compassion Ministries, uh, and then Monday was praying for new churches, new church plants, and uh, also asking for the Lord to call out uh, church planters and 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 uh, I, mother churches to help uh, churches like ours to go and to support church plants. So be much in prayer for 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 that for new churches reaching lost people. And then uh, of course uh, Tuesday was uh, adoption ministries. And then today's prayer request that we're praying for is our collegiate campus ministry, our Baptist collegiate ministry, uh, BCMs that are across our state. Uh, colleges throughout the state of Tennessee and um, I've had the opportunity to get to go to BCM and speak and I know several of you all maybe have gotten the opportunity to be a part of that uh, whether while in college or having the opportunity to go and serve and minister there uh, but uh, they are a wonderful wonderful uh, ministry throughout our college campuses and uh, they are reaching people reaching students throughout uh, on the campus and getting the opportunity to tell them about Christ and getting to do that in a lot of different ways and that's through feeding them or supplying their need or, or just getting together and having fellowship with one another uh, they have those opportunities to be able to tell somebody about Christ so we definitely want to pray for our BCMs our collegiate ministries uh, tonight as well so keep that in mind this is the week of prayer for Tennessee missions and the golden offering the offering will be taken up on September the 17th so remember that also, uh, we want to uh, make mention of that um, we'll be having business meeting tonight right after following our uh, st uh, Bible study and prayer meeting. And then, of course, Compassion Ministries that we've been praying for this week and prayed for on Sunday, uh, they will be working with the Union County Family Resource Center, and they will be giving away uh, lots of food on September 9th, 2023, and that will be, at, be starting at 8 o'clock. And so keep that in mind, I believe... Okay, all right, sorry about that, 10 o'clock. So the the screen, it, it will go off the screen. So that's 10.30 to 1, So or until all the food is gone in the Union County High School parking lot. So keep that in mind, remember that. Uh, so just a lot to be praying for. Uh, we also want to remember our church picnic. Hannah, do you have anything? keep that in mind and then of course choir practice will be the 13th 20th and 27th of the month of September and we want to remember that and then of course grandparents day is September the 10th and Brooke Simpson will be uh, in charge of that so uh, we got a few things coming up but we do have a lot to pray for tonight but I'm going to ask brother Hunter if he would to come him and Cheryl and David and uh, lead us in song tonight and before they do let's go to the Lord in prayer Father, we thank you for another opportunity, Lord, it is to come be in your house this evening. We pray, Father, that, Lord, you would be with us tonight. We pray that, Father, Lord, you bless this time, Lord, that we can worship you through song. Father, just thank you and praise you, God, for who you are. And, Lord, we pray tonight, Father, that, Lord, you would help us, Lord, as we study in your word. God, we pray and we ask that you would lead us by your Holy Spirit, direct and guide us in the way you'd have us to go. And all this we ask in your name. Amen.
on our screen tonight and I'm going to read over several prayer requests that we have that we're praying for uh, that we definitely want to remember tonight. We want to continue to remember the uh, McCurry family and our prayers and uh, the, the ones there that are um, uh, part of that family. We want to continue to pray and remember the lost. Uh, we want to remember all of our missionaries tonight. Remember our country. Remember our leaders. Let's continue to remember all of our military. Remember our homeless Remember those that are in our nursing homes. Uh, remember our shut-ins tonight. Uh, we definitely want to remember and pray for Bible release time, and that is coming up uh, the 1st of October. And so we're praying. We're looking forward to that. And then we're also we want to remember uh, Brother Ronnie Robbins tonight in prayer as well. And uh, those are just some requests that we have that are on our bulletin uh, that we're praying for. Anybody else tonight have any other requests? And we have several tonight that's on our screen. As it's rolling through, you can see there's several that we need to remember tonight and pray for this evening. Anybody have a request? Let's continue to pray. Remember, Teresa, and there be another. Let's pray for Daryl's mother this evening. Anybody else? Remember this. Zeddy family. Just remember them. Anyone else tonight? Let's remember this. Remember Ann's uh, family in prayer. Remember Williams family, her cousin. Remember them. Anyone else? Hmm. Wow. Remember this little boy when we pray. Anyone else? Anybody tonight have a lost person on your heart that you're praying for? We definitely want to remember these tonight in prayer. 
everybody is able tonight, and if you can, let's come down. Let's go to the, the Lord in prayer in our altar. Let's gather here tonight, and uh, as you're coming, we definitely want to remember all these requests. Uh, but I want to read as you're coming down tonight, uh, just a little bit, the, the prayer guide for our Tennessee Baptist Mission Board for the Golden Offering. And uh, today's prayer uh, is for the uh, Collegiate Campus Ministries. I mentioned the BCMs throughout our state. And uh, the verse of scripture tonight for this prayer comes from Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. And it says, Then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. And uh, the three points of prayer uh, for our BCM tonight, number one is pray for Tennessee collegiate ministers that they may lead a ministry of transformative dis discipleship that rises above current cultural and political div divisiveness and develops lifelong leaders that serve the one true kingdom. So we want to remember that tonight. Pray that the Baptist Collegiate Ministries may reach into the population of several thousand college students arriving in the state of Tennessee from other nations. And we talked a little bit about that on Sunday. God's bringing a lot of different nations to just the state of Tennessee. So, And um, the, the opportunity for the, the, the college ministry, the pastors and the BCMs, they're getting that opportunity uh, to minister to a lot of different students from different nationalities. So we definitely want to remember and we definitely want to pray for them. Uh, we also want to pray that they would be receiving of the gospel message as well. So uh, the next, the last point that they make is a next generation of leaders, a broad in culture, race, and ethnic background must be found and equipped to serve Christ in a changing Tennessee pray that we are sensitive and ready to discover and train them during their college years so as uh, as well as we all look around we know things are changing life changes doesn't it, it changes so quick day in day out but uh, let's be praying that that God would would raise up this next generation of leaders that they would be willing to serve the Lord and follow the Lord and, and be led by his Holy Spirit and and so we, we, we definitely have a lot to pray for tonight. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and let's remember these requests tonight as we pray. Father, we thank you for another opportunity, Lord. It is to be in your house, and Lord, thank you for the opportunity to call on your name. Lord, I just pray, and Father, I ask tonight that, Lord, you would be with every request that, Father, is, is on our screen tonight. Father, we have so many names and so many families, Father, and so many requests that father are there that lord as those screens just roll father with different names on them and we pray father that lord you would be ever near to each and every name each and every family lord we pray you'd minister father to every need according to your will and your way we pray tonight father we know lord of the hands that went up and even the hands that didn't go up father Lord, we all, Lord, tonight have somebody on our heart that, Lord, we know is lost and does not know you as their Savior. And I pray tonight that, Father, you would give us such a love for those people, Father, that, Lord, a love for them that, God, we would want to tell them about you. And, Father, the change and the difference that, Father, you can make in their life that, Lord, you've made in our life. And, Lord, we pray that, God, you would help us, Lord, to be that type of light and that witness for you, Lord, to them. We pray, Father, Lord, for the many requests that, Father, we have tonight, Lord, that are in our bulletin. We're praying tonight, Father, for our missionaries. Father, we have missionaries that are serving you, Lord, here locally, Father, through our state. Lord, we pray for our missionaries throughout North America and, Lord, on the international uh, uh, level as well. And, Father, we pray for our missionaries that are going to the unreached people groups. We pray that you would open doors and opportunities up for them, that they would have the opportunity to present the gospel, Father, to these people, that they would hear your word and hear about the saving power and the changing power, Lord, of your, your word and your Holy Spirit. And Lord, would believe and call on your name. We pray tonight, Father, uh, Lord, for our country. We pray for the leaders of our country, Father. Lord, that being on a local, a state, and a national level, we pray, Father, Lord, that you would be with those leaders, Father. We pray that you would guide them and direct them. We pray that, Father, they would look to you. And if they don't know you as their Savior, I pray you'd put people in their path that, Lord, they would come to know you, Father. We pray tonight, Lord, that you would be with our military. We pray for those that are facing homelessness, Father, here locally and throughout our country. 
God, we pray for those that are in our nursing homes. Father, Lord, we pray for those in our church that, Father, in nursing homes or that are shut in or not able to come and be with us. We ask and pray that, God, you administer to them, Father, with and through by your Holy Spirit. God, we pray for a Bible release time, Lord, that's coming up. We pray for those students that you would even now begin to prepare their hearts. And, Lord, we pray we thank you for this opportunity and this open door that you've given us to be able to present the gospel to them. And we pray, Father, for a willingness. We pray for a desire, Father, for these students to come and be a part. God, we just pray, Father, Lord, for all the oppressed people around the world. We pray, Father, Lord, for those that have lost loved ones this week. God, we pray for the McCurry family. God, we're praying, Lord, that, Father, you be with Zeddy and her family, Father, and the loss of their brother. God, we pray, Lord, for Anne's family, Lord, that will be burying that loss, that, that loved one, Lord, there tomorrow. We pray that, God, you would be with them, Lord, in their loss. We pray, Father, Lord, for um, Jill, Father, for her husband, Darrell. We pray for his mother. God, we just continue to pray, Father, Lord, for Teresa, that you touch her and bring healing and strength to her. And, Father, we pray for the little boy, Father, that Hannah requested prayer for that's battling, Lord, leukemia. We just pray for him and his family that you give them strength and help. God, we pray tonight, Lord, as we shift our prayer, Father, Lord, towards our BCMs, Lord, throughout the state of Tennessee. And we pray that, God, you would equip, Lord, the, the ministers there of the BCMs to preach the gospel, to teach the gospel, to share the gospel, to equip the, the college students, Father, to be disciples for you, that they would go out, Lord, from their gatherings. And, Lord, Lord, they would begin to engage, Lord, in their peers, Lord, on campus. And God, begin to build relationships with them. And God, be able, begin to be able to talk with them and share with them uh, the gospel of Jesus. And I pray for those that are of... Ne of of different nationalities. We pray that, Father, they would receive you, Lord, as their Savior. We pray that they would be open and receptive to hearing the gospel, Lord, as it's shared. And, God, we just pray that you would move in a mighty way, Father, throughout our campus ministries across the state of Tennessee and use them for your glory. God, we love you. We pray, your Lord, your blessings tonight upon the remainder of this service. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. As you're making your way back to your seats this evening, uh, we're tonight we're going to uh, start into a new study uh, that I shared with you there uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, it's been on my heart uh, for several months uh, on how to study the Bible. And uh, this is going to be, um, I'll be honest with you, I don't know how many uh, weeks we're going to study on this, but I do want to try to take some of the highlights and the high points uh, for us to look at to be able to have a good understanding of how to study the Bible. And um, I've got uh, a couple of things tonight, a couple of points that we want to study, that we want to look at. And uh, the first one tonight that we're going to study is what we're going to look at, the first thing we've got to have is a foundation. Uh, anytime you begin to go and you begin to build a house, you begin to build some type of structure, you begin to kind of build some type of relationship with anybody, you've got to have a foundation, don't you? Uh, you've got to have a foundation. And even uh, not only a foundation, but I believe God's Word teaches us tonight uh, of how important that a good, solid foundation is. And if we've got a good, uh, solid foundation spiritually uh, and biblically tonight, it's going to help us uh, be able to understand how to study the Bible and what we're reading. So tonight, the first thing, the first point we want to look at is foundation. And uh, the first point that we want to look at tonight is this. The first place to start when studying the Bible is a foundation. We've got to have a foundation. We need to have a good foundation and a system of reading, studying, interpreting, and applying God's Word. Now, I want to go right there to that third point right there tonight uh, that we just read over, and there are several good things just right there that we don't need to skip over. When we are learning how to study the Bible and study God's Word, this is what we've got to keep in mind. Number one, we've got to have a good foundation. We're talking about that right now. But we've got to have a good system of reading. Number one, reading, studying, 
interpreting. That right there is important. Interpreting and applying God's Word. Amen? We've got to be able to understand that. We need a good system of reading. Now, how would you, uh, what, 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 when you may ask yourself a question, say, Preacher, how do I start with a good system of reading? Well, it doesn't hurt, and, and the best place to start is prayer. And uh, when you begin to pray and you begin to ask the Lord, say, Lord, uh, just show me, lead me to where you would like for me to read and where you'd like for me to study. And, and God may lay a book on your heart. Uh, he may lead you to start studying or reading a book. Then again, he may not. And, and you may just have to, to, to pick you a book and begin to read and begin to study that. And uh, I would encourage anyone, and I encourage young Christians this, that one of the best books to start at in God's Word is the Gospel of John. And when you begin to start reading through and studying the Gospel of John, you may want to even go through and begin to study through 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John after you study the Gospel of John. But I would encourage you tonight that to get you a good daily Bible reading system down. And whatever that is, if that's one verse, two verses, five verses a day, or a chapter a day, whatever that is, get you a good system down in reading and studying God's Word. Now, when you begin to read God's Word, you've got to take it another step. Not just reading God's Word, but we've got to study God's Word. And we're going to get on into that later on in a few weeks on how to study God's Word. But then once we get to begin to read and once we begin to study and we have a good understanding of what the Scripture is saying and what it's teaching us while we're reading it, we've got to have a good interpretation. And having a good interpretation, the right interpretation, means everything in the world. So we've got to have that. And then, not only that, uh, when we read, when we study, when we interpret the Bible, We've got to take it another step, and we've got to apply it. Amen? We've got to apply God's Word to our life every day. We can read the Bible. I don't care. You can read the Bible uh, all the way through for the last 30 years of your life, but it ain't going to do you no good if you don't take it and apply it every day to your life. You've got to apply God's Word. So we find right here, uh, this next point says, We must not just read and study God's Word only, but we must understand and interpret and apply what we read and study. So the, the Bible teaches us in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. And if you want to turn with me tonight in your Bibles, we're going to be on the screen as well. But if you want to read from your Bible this evening, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, we're going to look at verses 24 through 27. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. And Jesus teaches us the importance of a good foundation. Uh, a good foundation. So we find right here there's no uh, better teacher uh, than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So look what our Lord said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. Here's what the Bible says. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. How many in here this evening would love to be considered and referred to as a wise person. Don't be so humble. We all want to be wise, don't we? Amen? We all want to know. We all want to have a good understanding. We all want to have wisdom and knowledge and understanding of that. So he says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, Jesus is saying, Listen. Listen to my words. Listen to my teachings. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to my sayings. And he says, And not only do we hear them or listen to them, but he takes it another step and says, and doeth them. So we've got to not only be, as James records, as James writes, a hearer of God's word, but we've got to be a doer of God's word as well. So that goes right there hand in glove. We can read, we can hear all day long, but we've got to be a doer of God's word. We've got to apply God's word to our lives daily. So we find Jesus goes on to say, he says, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon 
a rock. How many of us in here to know tonight, without reading any more in this verse of Scripture, that we would rather have a house built on the rock, wouldn't we? We would rather have, we would love to have a rock-solid foundation. Verse 25 says this, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. When our house, spiritually, when we are built on a solid biblical foundation, a spiritual foundation, we are going to have rains in our life. It's going to rain on you, on your parade from time to time. If you've, been, if you've lived any amount of life uh, up to this point, you know that you've went through some rains in your life. Amen? We've all had them. We've all had where the rain, it just seems like, man, when it rains, it pours, don't it? It just seems like no matter what we do, everything, everywhere we turn, everything we do, man, it just seems like it's like pouring water out of a boot on us. It just, when it rains, it pours. We're going to have those seasons. We're going to have those times in our life. That's reality. That's life. It's going to rain on you and on me. It's going to rain on our parade. We find right here, he said, the rain descended and the floods came. Sometimes in our life, man, it just seems like everything's coming against us, right? The floods of this everything. We're just flooded with, with all kinds of different things, whether it's challenges or emotions or circumstances or difficulties or whatever, just life itself when it rains and it seems like sometimes we're just overcome. We're flooded by everything that's going on. He's saying when those floods come, not only that, the winds, they begin to blow. We're going to have times where it just seems like we're in the midst of a storm, right? It, it just seems like everything's blowing on around us which built his house upon the rock amen he said when the rain came when the floods came when the wind blew and when they beat on that house you and I in this world we are going to take a beating from this life from time to time but rest assured tonight if you've been saved and born again and a child of God listen my friend and you are built upon the rock the solid rock the firm foundation here's what Jesus said he said and it fell not, for it was founded on the rock. Rest assured tonight, there's good news for you and I. Even though the storms of life may come, even though the rains may beat against us, the floods may overwhelm us, listen, my friend, we will not fall. Why? Because we're built on the rock, and we've got a good foundation. So here's what he said, verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not. So he's saying, listen, you hear the word, but you don't take the word, and you're not a doer of the word. You're not applying the word of God in your life every day. You don't have that spiritual house. It's not built on the firm foundation on the rock. Here's what he says. He said, shall be likened to a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. A firm foundation, a good foundation, is important tonight. We've got to have a good foundation. Now, the next point tonight we want to look at is Scripture. You say, preacher, where, where we go? We've got to have a good foundation, but we've got to, our foundation, it's got to be built on the rock, but that's built up, and our foundation is built and formed on Christ, but through Scripture. Now, here's what we've got to understand about Scripture. First thing tonight we've got to keep in mind, when we go to read and study the Word of God, and we study Scripture, here's what we've got to keep in mind. We need to, we need to have a commitment we need to be committed and have a commitment to a high view of Scripture. Now, what does that mean, to have a high view of Scripture? Well, here's what the Bible teaches us. Jesus held a high view of Scripture. Matthew chapter 5, 17 through 18. You may want to write those verses down. Uh, you may want to go back and you may want to read and study that this week. But while we're right here in the book of Matthew chapter 5, I would like to turn right over there. If you've got your Bible, it's not going to be on the screen tonight. But in your Bible, look with me in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. I want to read this real quick. Here's what Jesus said. Think not that I am come to destroy the law 
or the prophets. I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. He said, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Jesus was all about withholding and uphold, or upholding the word of God. Amen? There was not anything he was not going to allow. Uh, my friend, he was committed to it. He said, think not that I come to destroy the law. Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He didn't come to destroy the prophets. No, he did not come to do away with the Old Testament or the foundations. No, he did not. But yet he came to fulfill the law and to fulfill the prophets. And we know that he did that. He also told me, he said, listen, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till it all be fulfilled. The word of God is fulfilled in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the one. He held a high view of Scripture. The Apostle Paul held a high view of Scripture. You can write this verse down, read on it, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. Uh, Peter, also one of the apostles, he had a high view of Scripture, and he talked about even the help and the leadership and the guidance of the Holy Spirit in 2 Peter 1, 20 through 21. So just a little bit about Scripture tonight. Number one, what is Scripture? Scripture is God's Word. God's Word. Scripture is God's Word. God's Word is, remember these two words, if you don't remember anything else. God's Word is inerrant. Amen? It is without error. Amen? And it is infallible. Amen? We must have a conviction of the profitability of all Scripture. The Bible is our authority for daily living. We've got to keep that in mind. Guys, listen. God's Word is the standard. God's Word is the authority for our daily living. So what we've got, why are we, why are we covering this tonight? You may be sitting there saying, well, I thought we were supposed to learn how to study the Bible. We're getting there. But we've got to understand this before we can understand God's Word. Amen? And we've got to keep that in mind, that God's Word is the inerrant and infallible Word of God. And we've got to have a high view of God's Word, and that God's Word is the authority in our lives daily, guiding us and directing us. We've got to have a conviction of that. We've got to have a conviction about it to the point to say, God, what does your word tell me? What do I need to be doing? Now listen, we all fail. We all sin. We all come short. But we ought to try our best every day to live our lives according to what the Bible says and what God's word says and what the Holy Spirit of God leads us and guides us and directs us to do. So we've got to have a high view of the Scripture and the Word of God. Another point that we want to kind of hit on tonight, we've talked about having a good foundation about the Scripture, about having a high view of the Scripture. The next one we want to talk about is the interpretation. Now this one right here, when you begin to study God's Word and study the Bible, interpretation is a big one because we all have our own versions, don't we? Huh? That's awful quiet. We all got our own versions, don't we? We do. You talk to anybody long enough about God's Word, I guarantee you they're going to tell you what they think about it. They're going to give you their interpretation, their version of it. Well, here's some things when reading and studying God's Word that we need to write down, that we need to keep in mind, will help us interpretation. Okay? Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. It's going to be on the screen. Here's what it says. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Catch that. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. We've studied doctrine the last several weeks. We've studied on what we believe and why we believe it. That's doctrine. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It instructs us in righteous living, in the way we should live, in the way we should go, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That scripture right there sums a lot of it up. 
You see, because God's Word is given to us, it's given by inspiration of God, but it's profitable, not only that, but it's profitable for doctrine, for what we believe, why we believe it, and it's prof- profitable for, it's for reproof, it's for correction, it corrects us, it, it, my friend, teaches us and gets us back on the right path when we get out of the way, it corrects us, it guides us, it's instruction in righteousness, for righteous living. And not only that, that the man of God may be perfect. It's for you and I that we may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Look at this next point this evening. It says, God is the inspiring author. Where do you get that from? Well, got it right there from verse chapter to 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16, 17, where it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. God is the inspiring author. The Holy Spirit of God, the Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit is inspired men, didn't he? The Holy Spirit moved upon men. He inspired men. It is a dual authorship. Now, what do you say? What do you mean by that? Well, it's divine and it's human. Amen? We've got the divine author of God, but we've got the human author, the one that wrote it, the men that penned down the words, they wrote it as well. The Bible is the Word of God written in the words of men. Men begin to write that as the Holy Spirit, as God moved upon them and inspired them and gave them utterance. So God's word is fully divine. We find that. We also find here is we as readers are to honor the author and his intended meaning. Right there. Mark it down. Write it down. Highlight it. Whatever you want to do. But that right there is very, very important for us as we begin to read and study the word of God and interpret the word of God is that we as as readers are to honor the author and his intended meaning. So what do you mean by that? Well, when we're like we've been going through the book of 2 Thessalonians, right? We need to honor, number one, the main author, the inspiring author. Who is the inspiring author? It's God. God was the one that inspired that. Out of inspiration, God inspired the writing of Paul. He moved upon Paul with the Holy Spirit, and he began to give Paul the words to pin down, the words to write, the words to say to the church of Thessalonica. So Paul, you see, Paul was writing this letter because he had a point, he had a message, he had a meaning, he had an intent that he was writing the church of Thessalonica to and for. But that intent and that meaning and that message and that point came from God Almighty. So we've got to, as readers, honor the author and his intended meaning. We've got to have an understanding of what was going on at that point in time. What was going on at that time? What's the message? What's the meaning? What's the intention here that that God is trying to get? What's the message for the people of that day and that time? It's also the same for you and I, isn't it? We see the thing about God's word is, is this, is God's word was written many, many years ago. But you know what? It's still relevant for you and for me and the day we're living in. And as long as God allows this to go on, God's word will always be relevant. Why? Because it is living and breathing. Amen. The word of God is alive and real. We find here that the next point says, Meaning comes from the author through the Holy Spirit to the text, then to the reader. When we are trying to understand the meaning, the meaning comes from the author, the meaning comes from God, through the Holy Spirit that was inspired by, and then the text that we read, then to us. The health of our church depends on a strict, accurate interpretation of the Holy Scriptures. I could not agree with that more. The health of our church, I would go to say, it depends, but it is our lifeline. How we read, how we study, how we interpret God's Word. The health of our church, it depends on it. But you see, it's not just reading, and it's just not studying, and it's just not interpreting. We have to do all those things. But we have to go another step, and we have to apply 
God's word to our lives. You see, we all want to be wise, but we don't want to be just a bunch of Dead Sea Scrolls walking around, do we? No. We can have all the wisdom and knowledge in the world, but we've got to apply it every day and apply God's word every day, not only to our lives, but in circumstances and situations in our lives. Look at the next point. It says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, Study to shew thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I believe with all my heart he's just not talking about preachers or Sunday school teachers right there. I believe he's talking about everybody that's been saved and born again that's a child of God. We all need to study to show ourselves approved. We do. We need to study to show ourselves approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. We should not be ashamed of what God has showed us in his word. Let me say that again. We should not be ashamed of what God has showed us in his word. If God has showed you and give you that, you should not be ashamed of that. Amen? We do not need to be ashamed, but we also have to rightly divide the word of truth. And that goes along with accurately handling God's word. We want to handle God's word well, don't we? We do. I do. Me being your preacher, me being your pastor, believe me. If there's anybody that, you all don't put pressure on me, I put pressure on myself. And I, I put the pressure on myself because I want to handle the word of God well and accurately. I want to be able to give you all God's word and give you what it means and the right words and the right interpretation and handle it well. And we as Christians, we as a body of believers, we should want to handle God's word well and accurately. All interpretation must be wedded to the scriptures. That right there, you may want to write that down. That right there is very important. All interpretation. When we interpret God's word, it must be wedded. It must all go back to Scripture. It's all got to go back to the word of God. Amen? And when next, next point there says, we need to keep in mind the Bible, God's word, is what it is. Amen? It is what it is. God's word is the standard, the authority of our everyday living. I like to say this, I believe that um, there, when you read and you study God's word, God's word is pretty black and white, isn't it? It's black and white. There, there, it, it's, it's, it's just, it is what it is. It is what it says it is. And that's the way we need to take it. We need to have an accurate interpretation, an interpretive system, rightly reading, rightly interpreting, rightly applying. Apply the instruction of Scripture and do what the Scripture instructs us to do. So tonight, what we have done is all we have done is got us a good foundation. We've laid a good groundwork and a good foundation for what it takes on how to study the Bible and study God's Word. Not only study God's Word, read God's Word, interpret God's Word, but apply God's Word to our lives every day. And I believe with all my heart, church, I really believe this. If we as individuals can have a good daily Bible reading system and plan where we're reading, and not only are we reading, but we're actually studying. And we're going to get into how we actually study with some dictionaries and commentaries and understanding Greek and understanding uh, the Hebrew and the words and the meanings and it helps us understand the Scripture. We're going to get all of that, get into all that, but we've got to have this first. But when we get, begin to read and we actually begin to study, and then once we're studying, then we actually begin to interpret and understand what we're reading and understand what God's trying to show us here, we can take it and apply it to our life. Man, I tell you what, God can really use us in a mighty way. God can really use us in a mighty way as a church, as a body, as a whole, and as an individual. I believe that with all my heart tonight. Thank you tonight. That's all the Lord has given me. I want to ask them if they would come and get a psalm, a uh, time of invitation. Maybe you're here tonight and you just need to come and pray. Maybe um, 
God's spoken to your heart this evening through uh, the reading of His Word, through the Scripture, through preaching. Uh, maybe tonight God's just been speaking to you with your whole, through the Holy Spirit. Maybe God's saying, hey, you know, commit tonight to daily Bible reading and study. And maybe you're here and you just made, need to make that commitment, whatever it is that God is speaking to your heart, leading you to do. Maybe you need to come. Maybe life's thrown everything at you this, uh, this week. Maybe it's raining on your parade. Uh, maybe you need to come pray. This altar is open tonight. But as we stand to our feet, as they sing, let's pray, mind the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this evening. And we pray, Father, that, Lord, your Holy Spirit would just speak to us. Father, help us, Lord, to be good students of your word. Help us, Father, to not only read, but help us to have a commitment of high, a high view of Scripture. And, Lord, I pray that, Father, Lord, knowing that Scripture is the infallible and the inerrant Word of God, that it is the true divine authority for our lives, that we believe that, God, your Word was written by men that were divinely inspired and moved upon as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance and moved on them to write and to pin down these words. Help us, Father, when we read that, Father, we would honor the author's intended purpose and meaning and message that was behind it. And, Father, I pray that, Lord, not only when we begin to read, but, God, help us to study, help us to understand, help us to interpret what we are reading, Father, through the Holy Spirit and through studying. But, God, when we get all that, Lord, help us to truly take it and apply it to our lives daily, that, Father, we could be a help to someone in this world, Father, and that may be able to lead somebody that's lost to you. We love you, and all this we ask in your name. Amen. I can hear my Savior calling, I can hear my Savior calling, I can hear my Savior calling, take thy cross and follow, follow me, where he certainly has been good to be in the Lord's house this evening, and uh, we do appreciate everybody that's come to be with us tonight. If, uh, if you're visiting with, her, with us this evening, uh, at this time, we'll go ahead and allow you to go ahead and go, uh, but we're going to go right ahead and go into our monthly business meeting as scheduled, and uh, we do appreciate all of our visitors here tonight, and you're more than welcome to stay if you would like, but this time you are uh, free to be dismissed if you would like to be. <laughs>